The following story has been brought to you by storiestoinspire.org. I'd like to share a beautiful story that I never heard before. It was said over by a Rabbi Nit Shemesh in Eretz Yisrael, and she shared the following remarkable story. There was a band, a from band, a religious band, that played at all kinds of different simchas, weddings, bar mitzvahs, etc., etc. And they were booked for a particular wedding in a hall that they were very familiar with. And they showed up before the wedding to set everything up, all the equipment, the audio equipment, the instruments, and they realized right away that there was a tremendous misunderstanding. This wedding was not a wedding that they were comfortable playing at. There was no mechitza. The people were not dressed modestly. There would be mixed dancing. And the band said, we, we just are not playing at this band. and We're not just playing at this wedding. We, we don't play at weddings like this. And the chassan and kawa, the bride and the groom, came over and said, we booked you, and we have a contract here. You can't just walk away. Who's going to play music at our wedding? And they apologized profusely and they said there must be some type of misunderstanding. But we have certain standards in halacha and we cannot be part of this type of wedding. A wedding at this, at, at this type of situation is usr, it's prohibited, we're so sorry. And then there's a whole commotion erupted and one fellow strides over, a very aristocratic looking fellow, and he says to him, I just want you to know something, I'm an attorney. You're bound by contract to play at this wedding. You should know that if you don't pay, play at this wedding, there's by Israeli law, there's a $10,000 penalty there's already a precedent. It's already in there in Israeli law. If you walk away and the chas and the bride and the groom don't have a band at their wedding easily, because of you, you should understand something. It's going to be a $10,000 fine. The leader of the band looked at them and he said, you know what? $10,000 is a tremendous amount of money for me. It's not easy. But it's a small concession to keep halacha and to follow that which is right and that which is appropriate and that which is true. I'm sorry. We can't do it. And he packed his stuff up they put all the audio equipment away and all the instruments, and they headed off home. Sure enough, within the next few days, a very fancy letter arrived, an official-looking letter that delineated the penalty that he'd have to pay, and this poor band leader had to pay $10,000 out of his own pocket. Listen, he felt it was his mesiras nefesh, his sacrifice, his dedication to keeping halacha properly. About two years passed, and the band leader gets a call from a couple he doesn't recognize the name. And they say, listen, we're making a Pidin Ben. Our son's going to turn day, day number 30. We're going to have a Ben. It's such a festive event. We'd love to have a band. You guys play a Pidin Abens. He says, uh, it's not a usual thing, but we could play anywhere. Sure. And the uh, Pidin Ben was scheduled to be in a hall that they were very familiar with. And they show up. And there's a lot of simcha. There's a lot of joy. And the father and mother of the child walk over to the band leader. He doesn't recognize them. And they look at him and they say, do you recognize who we are? He says, I'm sorry, I don't. Who are you? He said, we're the chasen and kala. We're the bride and groom that you walked away from our wedding. Really? He said, you don't look the same. He turns to the man, he's wearing a yarmulke and he has tzitzis. The woman, her head is covered, she's dressed modestly. He says to them, I don't understand what's going on. What happened? And why did you invite me to play to Bidin Aben? And I said, you need to understand something. When you walked away from that wedding, and you understood fully well that you would be getting a $10,000 penalty, a $10,000 fine. We couldn't believe it. It's so rare to have people these days that stick to their values, that keep to what they believe in. We were blown away, myself and my husband. And the truth is, we grew up in northern Tel Aviv, and we never really had an exposure to religious people. But a person who's willing to take such a financial hit because of their convictions, because of our belief, what's right, this made a tremendous rishim, a tremendous impression on us. And we enrolled in a seminar for people to learn more about Judaism. And this has been our journey. Take a look at us. We're Shadmir Terah Mitzvah today. We're fully observant. And our son is having a pidgin aben. And we just felt it would be so right to have you play music at an appropriate event with a mechitza. The dancing will be separate. Thank you so much for coming. And before the end of the pidgin aben, they walked over to the phone. They handed him an envelope. And in the envelope was the payment for paying at that pit in Aben, plus $10,000. And the note said that this $10,000 changed our life. Thank you so much for what you did. Amazing. When we're moister nefesh for the Rabbeinu Shalom, when we show dedication, when we sacrifice for the Rabbeinu Shalom, in the long row, we never lose. And forget about the $10,000. This young couple with a beautiful child, a mitzvah shem will have doire doiris, generations of shem retar mitzvahs, people that are observant, Learning Torah, doing mitzvahs, all in the schus of this particular fellow. Forget about the $10,000.
the fellow earned much more. He earned nitzchias. He earned eternity. But I just want to point out something important. It was a big nisayan. That moment when he had to make a decision if he was going to walk away from that band, from that wedding, and he was not going to play, that was a tremendous nisayan. That was a tremendous decision. And we don't always think, see, see things with such clarity. This fellow had absolute clarity. It was crystal clear to him. But how often in life are we faced with dilemmas and with ordeals? And it's not so clear to us. And the decision is a difficult one. And often we don't make the right decision. Enjoyed this story? Come again. Bring a friend. Stories to inspire.org.